Hey, good evening, everybody. This is Sports for Night News. I'm Joe Boric. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe down below or on the easy to use widget at the end of the video. This is going to just be a quick reaction to our Philadelphia Flyers shutting out the Arizona Coyotes three to nothing after being awoken after that no goal call by the referees, the abysmal call. So let's get right into it. <clears throat> our Flyers led by a great game by Carter Hart who was able to shut out the Coyotes on 29 shots, making some key saves, particularly early, especially in the first and second period, when until that no goal call, the Coyotes, the Yotes, really had more of the goal chances. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've been sick today with my throat and stomach, but have had more of the goal chances in that game, and then all of a sudden it seemed like when the refs really botched that call, like Al Morgani said, it seemed like the puck might have been frozen because normally refs don't let a guy be able to kick it out, but they never blew the whistle and pointed as a goal on the ice, so therefore it should stay as a goal. I even looked it up in the rule book, and nowhere in the rule book does it say if the whistle is not blown, should they just be able to unilaterally say, I screwed up, that's my mistake, I can change this call. So that was a weird play, a play that should have been another goal for Cam Atkinson as far as I'm concerned. And then, of course, he hit the crossbar or the post later, and G on the power play when it went off of Vigmelka's shoulder, which is the another big reason um, the Coyotes were able to stay in that game when we were on the power play earlier was the way that he played. And also when the Flyers did get some chances before they kind of really broke it open a little bit and kind of got their offense going more in the third, he was able to step up like on Limblum, on Giroux, and on others, Atkinson in some aspects as well earlier in the game, and make some key saves. So you have to give a shout out to Karel Vizmelka coming over from the check too. He played a hell of a game as well and kept the Yotes in the game. But obviously the Flyers, you would have wanted to see a little bit more pressure early. But as such, when you just look around the NHL, don't tell the Flames this obviously, but when you come back, from a road trip, teams don't tend to always perform for whatever reason well in the first game back at home, but we walked out with a win, which was key, and a win's a win, and that's exactly what I wanted to walk out with, because we play Washington, or Pittsburgh, excuse me, Ness, then Washington, and then come back home to play one game against Toronto, and then play Carolina and Dallas, in Carolina and Dallas, and then the Flyers have a homestand. So they only had a little blip at home, then we play Pitt at Pitt on Thursday, Washington at Washington on Saturday. Back next week to next Wednesday, we play Toronto. And then you go to, um, we play Carolina on the 12th, and then on the 13th, we play Dallas in Dallas. So this Flyers team doesn't have an easy schedule coming up. This was a game you really had to take advantage of any way you wanted at home. And no, we didn't look, obviously, the sharpest in the first two periods. And we also got some great saves by Karel Vojmelka on the other end when it came to the Arizona Coyotes. But <clears throat> the Flyers got the win. They were able to step up because Carter Hart bailed them out in some aspects early. And Sean Couturier was able to get a nice goal there from Giroux and Konechny, where we had a seven-period, yes, goal drought. But part of that was also because of goaltending on the other clubs, and also the fact that we have to be patient here. There's, I think it's like 246, if I'm doing the math right, periods in a season, so seven as a whole is not really all that big of a bugaboo to over-worry about when it comes to not scoring. The Flyers were able to get it going. It's usually harder, honestly, to say, let's stick with the lines and let them figure it out, than it is to say, let's mix it up right away to hope it gets going. A.B. talked about how he likes these lines and he likes the way the players feel playing on these lines, and they answered for him in that third period. After that non-allow call, it woke in the Flyers, and they really got going in the third to get the Couturier goal, to get the Lawton goal on the nice snapshot from JVR and Justin Braun, who, by the way, already has his fifth assist, really stepping up for our Philadelphia Flyers in the absence of Ryan Ellis, I must say. This is honestly the best, I would say, Justin Braun has looked. He has six points already in eight games for our Flyers this season. He's looking great stepping up for Ryan Ellis, so you got to give a shout-out to him. And then, of course, Giroux was able to get the empty netter when Couturier said he has enough empty net goals, basically, and wanted to get G1. So a win's a win. The Flyers got awoken in the third period. Carter Hart played well. 
And we got that gold drought off of our backs to carry into a shutout momentum to play the Pittsburgh Penguins, the rival tomorrow that I will be doing a preview for <clears throat> tomorrow and hopefully feel a little bit better to do that preview. So this has been a quick reaction to the 3 to nothing win led by Carter Hart and led by the awoken third period Flyers after that no goal call. Subscribe down below or on the easy to use widget above if you enjoy the content everybody. Let's go Flyers. Let's keep those winning ways going.